So our YouTube, today uh, we're going to chat about some success. I finally top eight in SCG Open. Um, it was a team open in Philadelphia. This is the 75 that I played at the event. Um, I've been streaming most of this for a little while. But I ended up last minute adding a Disdainful Stroke and a Kira, a great glass spinner. Um, because I wanted to, I felt like I was overboarding Nihil's Spellbomb, and it wasn't impactful enough, so I decided to, because the Jeskai decks were now, like, playing Baneslayer, Angel, and Lyra, I decided to play on a Disdainful Stroke, and I wanted some help against the, uh, removal heavy decks. So, this is what my, this is what I landed on. Um, my teammates, this was Tom's deck, Tom's standard deck. He played red-black, obviously. Uh, he started with uh, Owen Turtwell's list, made a couple changes. I guess I'm going to move this over here. I don't really know how. Get this over here. He made a couple. Yeah, thank you. He made a couple changes. Um, I guess to start, we, we was testing out with Tom and... We determined that we just wanted more access to these Rekindling Phoenixes because we thought that the Rekindling Phoenix was very good against the green decks. It was good against... The Rekindling Phoenix was basically good against everything. So we ended up cutting a Hazret and then putting two more on our sideboard. And I think that moving forward, Tom wants four in his 75. Um, because it was often the best card this weekend. And it's he'll likely play some number of that for the um, for the Grand Prix that he goes to in a couple weeks. Um, probably will end up cutting this Angrath, and he'll work it out. But uh, this was, yeah, this was Tom's deck. This Cuts Ribbons was really good all weekend. Um, you know, just overperformed. Overperformed all weekend, he said. So this was Tom's deck. And then over here was, um, nope, this was Delray's deck. I didn't know anything really about Delray's deck before the tournament. I This is not the kind of magic that I am very good at, but it was uh, Legacy Storm. I was kind of a little, um, a little nervous going in when I was thinking about what was going on with the Legacy Storm because obviously it had just gotten hit by Gita Gitaxian Pro getting banned. So like it was potentially a big a big loss. Um, I know that his team the prior weekend was nervous enough about it where Delray didn't play this deck in his team event. Um, I believe at SCG Worcester, he played Legacy because they were just worried that this deck just wasn't what it was. Um, I had known that Delray had played this deck for a while, and I knew that Delray was you know, great magic players, so we, and it was so last minute that we didn't have any, you know, we just needed somebody, and uh, we just, you know, knew Delray had a legacy deck, knew we had played it, and we just went with it. So, I guess kind of talking about the tournament itself, um, <clears throat> I only have one black lab, just one, so I'm losing there. Um, so I guess to talk about the tournament itself, Tom and I decided to show up. We got there, woke up about five o'clock, got there, um, got there Saturday morning, bought some cards, got ready to go. Um, then we got all of our wins and losses going on here. Um, had something kind of fun, so I guess I guess we should have known the tournament was going to be good starting from round one. Um, I remember, like, because I'm modern, so I'm in the middle seat. Um, I was resolving my first thought seeds. I was playing against Martyr Proc, which is kind of like a kind of a tough matchup unless you find Battle Rage. Like, that's just a number of decks that just can't beat Battle Rage. Um, I'm resolving my first thought seeds, and then I look over there. And Delray shuffling after I already saw him keep seven. And I was like, what is going on? And Delray is like, I turned one to him. So 
Delray on the play turn one his opponent. Um, and <laughs> so I haven't even finished resolving my first thought season. Delray's already won his first his first game. Then I remember a couple turns pass. Let me fix this a little bit, chat. Watch out. A couple turns pass, and Delray has won again. And I look back and I'm like, dude, what went on? And Delray's like, yeah, I won turn one on the play and I won turn one on the draw. And his opponent was playing goblins and he just couldn't stop him. So Delray's first match of the tournament lasted three total turns. That's when I knew that good things were going to happen. Um, this match, uh, Delray won and then Tom won. Tom won, um, then I finished my match ahead in game three. So, um, so started the tournament off beating Martyr Proc, and then we were one and out. Oh, my tea waters now. I'll be right back. Um. Um, then, so I'm back here, then, um, round two, I was playing against Jess Guy. I don't exactly remember what Tom was playing against, and I know Delray was playing against Sneaky Shell. Um, my opponent mulled in game one and game two. They mulled a four in game two and just got rolled. Yeah? Oh, give me one second. Um, all right, sorry, back. I had to pour my wife tea as well. Um, I remember, so that was, there wasn't really anything special about my match in round two. I remember that Delray, um, Delray resolving ad nauseum turn one against Storm, or turn one against Sneak and Shell, and he didn't win. Like, he won, he like stopped ad nauseum, ad nauseuming. I guess is how you say it. And I was like, Delray, what's going on? And he's like, it's okay. He ended up just discarding their hand and uh, won next turn. So I'd never seen something like that happen before. So I was pretty, never seen it. Like, never seen a Storm player not immediately win after an ad nauseum resolved. Um, I'm not exactly sure how Tom's match went that, um, that match. I wasn't as tuned in and I don't exactly remember. Um, then, you know, Delray won immediately in game two. So we're kind of rolling. All of us are chugging along until we get to round two. Round two, we play against, I think he plays, Tom plays the Red Black Mirror. I played Tron and um, Delray played uh, Eldrazi. And all of us got rolled. Like, we, we just all, we all pretty much got wrecked. And it wasn't even, wasn't really that close at all. So now we, Move on to round four. We're two and one, looking to bounce back. Um, I'm playing Burn, and I beat Burn in two pretty close games. My opponent didn't have anything game one. Like they drew, they drew runner, runner, land when I was at one. And they let me just kill him. So, you know, they got unfortunate there, and I got pretty lucky. And um, I remember Tom lost his match, and then we went over to Delray, and. Delray mulls the six against Black Red Reanimator, which I guess is a pretty poor matchup. And he ends up, um, he ends up like mulliganing the six. And his opponent sets up for a stronghold gamut, which is basically like a show and tell for if you win, you get to put your creature into play. But Delray doesn't have any creatures, so he always wins. Um, and then he always just gets it in there. I am, I am. Um, Delray just, oh, Delray, uh, he, how do I say this? He, so 
I knew Delray's hand was pretty disruptive. His opponent took his duress. Delray's hand was something like um, a bunch of mana, a lotus petal, and a brainstorm. He was basically, I think he was something like an LED and an infernal tutor off from just winning. And I guess Delray got the read that they were going to stronghold gamut. But I didn't really understand what was going on. And Delray leads on Lotus Petal and cracks for Brainstorm before he plays his land. And that's when I sat there and I was like, oh man. I was like, like we're going for it. And Delray brainstorms into Perfect Perfect and just kills his opponent on turn one after they um, unmask him. Um, so, so then... After, so we're, we're now 3-1 and one after coming back. That was like the match of the tournament, game of the tournament so far. Delray just like turn one his opponent when he had to, and he was fishing for it. Because if he stronghold gambits, he puts in Gristlebrand, just draw the main cards and game's over. So then after that, we go to round five. Um, round five, we get paired against Jarvis Hughes' team. And I get paired against someone that I have played against. I cannot remember his name, but I know that um, I know I've played him. And he ended up beating me in a human's mirror. I don't know, back to the last SCG. But he was ended up playing Tron. And I was fortunate enough to kind of get like the the like make a play on a stubborn denial that didn't actually uh, I stubborn denialed a chromatic star on one because I had a Snapcaster Mage, and I wanted to turn on a Gurmag Angler on two. So I just, like, stubbed him, and he didn't have a second land. So when he played his map on two, he just had to say go. So that ended up, I ended up taking that match. Then after that, and then I know that, I believe we all won that match after that one. Um, give me one second here. Um, sorry about that. I was I could hear my wife's podcast, so just wanted to turn it down. Um, so then we get to round. I gotta pull this back up now. We get to round. Uh, round six, I believe. Round six, we're playing against. Um, we're playing against, I'm playing against Fairies, Delray's playing against Stoneblade, and I can't remember what Tom was playing against again, but I remember Tom, both Tom and Delray rolled their opponent. I won game one and lost game two, and was on the play for game three, but I didn't get to finish my match, so, you know, it's, I'll, I'll like, take me on the play, but, um, you know, that one's kind of left up in the air. So then after that match... We get to go, we play against, um, we have to play against these, these really nice people that were playing, um, Affinity, Zombies, and Stoneblade, and I believe we all won our matches there, um, <clears throat> like, we just, we just kind of all rolled in there. I guess, actually, no, no, Del Rey struggled against... Um, Delray struggled against Eldrazi in that match. So Tom and I won that one. So now we are 6-1 and one going into round 8. And we get a side feature match. Um, Delray plays against Elves. and just He's just a turn faster than Elves. So he just beats him. I play against um, Titan Shift. And Tom plays against Blue White. Tom beats Blue White. I beat... Titan chip, but I'm not really happy the way that I played. I'm definitely kind of tired at this point. Work was pretty rough in the last week. I ended up going to get like a Red Bull, give myself a little more energy before the last round of the day. The last round of the day, we get paired up against um, Jonathan Rossum's team, and uh, they just kind of roll us. Like, 
Uh, Rossum had a pretty good top deck in to hit a Supreme Verdict to clear my board when he was, I think he was either dead the next turn or pretty close to dead. And he didn't have any cards in his hand. I, I had I'd gotten out in front of him and it was one of those games that Death Shadow can win, but he just hit a, uh, he hit a Verdict and that just won him the game. Um, then after that, uh, game two, he just kind of like muscled me. Um, he ended up landing a Jace and I spent too much time messing with this Jace when I should have tried to just kill him. And then they just rolled us the other two matches. Um, I guess Tom won one game because his opponent missed land drops, but the shadow deck just rolled over Delray. It was not, it was not pretty. So we're seven and two going into game two. Um, we go out to eat and Tom's a little worried about how to sideboard against Grixis. Um, he doesn't really know like the best way to do it. So we end up talking it out and making a plan and it helps a lot in day two. So, um, I actually get kind of sick overnight. I wake, I only get about five hours of sleep cause I had like a couple beers and then I had some chicken wings and like my stomach just did not feel good the next day. So I was kind of nervous, only got about five hours of sleep. So I think it causes issues in our first match when we lose again. So now we we're in a lot of trouble. Um, we all kind of get rolled. I lose to Tron, Delray loses to Infect, and I don't remember what Tom played against, but I believe Tom lost as well. Um, the VG land, I think it's pretty sweet. It looked good playing against Delray. Like it did just kind of stomp him. You know, wasn't wasn't super competitive. Um then after that, um, I get paired against humans and get a really powerful game one draw where I just go like angler into shadow on turn two. And that's just kind of like, that's kind of it. Uh, I just kind of run him over. And then game two is kind of long and drawn out, but I landed a Lava Mancer on one. So the Lava Mancer like kept me treading uh, high there. Um, and then Delray won his second match, his match, and I believe Tom won his as well. So we just kind of, we did really well there. So round 12 was actually pretty interesting. I get paired against Daryl Ayers, Edgar Magalhaes, and I don't remember the other guy's name, but Daryl Ayers is like someone that I watch. I knew he was playing Amulet. Um, I think Amulet's a pretty good matchup, but I know that he is a very good player. So... Delray runs over the runs over the lands player, just wrecks him. Um, what that's just how what how that works. There's nothing the lands player really can do. Um, uh, then Tom loses a really tight red black mirror match to Edgar Magalhaes. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but it was really close. Um, then I beat. So I took game one against Daryl. And then Daryl stabilized with a Hornet Queen. And I was getting kind of tired in this matchup. I made a mistake where I inquisitioned him after knowing all of his cards. It was just kind of hard for me to keep track of him because he kept bouncing them back to his hand with his bounce lands. Um, I didn't write down something off a of bobble. So it was, I ended up, I was a little rattled because I was not playing super tight against him and I was a little nervous. Like he's a very good player. Um, he was nice to play against. He wasn't mean or anything, but I knew he was better than I was. So I was, I was just nervous. So we went into game three. I'm all going to six because I don't have any threats. And then we both just get this in need. Like I thought scour on one at the end of Daryl's turn. I mill Gurmag Angler and Death Shadow and then draw just a blank. And they're going nuts over there. They're like, oh, wow, that's a good mill for us, you know? And then we both proceed to have really anemic draws until I find a death shadow and I'm at such a low life total because we, we've traded back. I don't know. He's discarded because of how awkward his hands lined up. He discarded like a, he discarded a couple times because he was on the draw with his bounce lands. Like he ended up playing a Vesuva on one to copy my bloodstain mire. So like, you know, so that was weird. Um, but he had to. So I end up finding a Death Shadow and then finding 
Battle Rage also and just killing him in one shot. But the turn before he was going to tighten me. Um, so it was kind of an anemic draw from both of us. Um, so now we're going into, so now we are both, at this point, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're eight and three. Okay, and then we're eight and three, and I get paired against Mardu Pyromancer. Okay, and my Mardu Pyromancer opponent proceeds to miss their second land drop after fate they kept a one lander faithless looting draw. And they miss their second land drop, and I just kind of Gurmag Angler them out of the game. And we play a really close second match, but he ends up um he ends up beating me there. But both of my teammates end up winning the match, their matches. So I was tied 1-1 on the play for game three, which is always a tough match. But I, I like my Death Shadow deck. I like this deck and how it's built after sideboard against the play against most decks, just because you're very aggressive, very, you know, very explosive. So we won't ever know, but I, I, I was confident. So now it's round 14. We get pulled up for a camera match. And this is like, this just kills me. They decide to put Delray on Sneak and Show, or Delray on uh, Storm against a red-black reanimator opponent. So this is like a terrible matchup for Delray. It's not interactive. It's just awful. I don't understand why they didn't put my match on camera. Like, Patrick Sullivan is a Burn commentating aficionado. I'm playing against Burn. Just, uh, Death Shadow versus Burn is like... So much fun to play, so much fun to commentate and watch. It just, like, killed me. I remember the exact play there. I mulliganed, um, I mulliganed a six in game one, and my hand is Thought Scour, Street Wraith, Fetchland, Thought Scour, Street Wraith, Fetchland, Watery Grave, Death Shadow, Death Shadow. Okay. And I kept a Street Wraith on top without knowing what my opponent had. <clears throat> and I end up, like, they end up bolting me on turn one. And then they play Eidolon on two, and I decide to fetch a tap land. So and I end up going to four, I end up going to 14, fetching a tap land at the end of their turn after their Eidolon resolves. I didn't even cast my Thought Scour. And then I untap, I cast my Death Shadow, the trigger made it a 1-1, and I cast another Death Shadow, and the next trigger made it a 2-2. So we go into my opponent's third turn, and they just play a tap land and pass. My opponent's at 17, my Death Shadows are threes. This right here is probably the probably my favorite moment of the tournament here. Um, this is where this picture came from, if I can find it right here so let's this right here is my third turn in the game okay I am at 10 my opponents at 17 and I have two death shadows where they have a rift bolt on suspend and I've got like two street rates in my hand um I've got two street rates in my hand and I've got a couple other cards that I don't really and I have a lightning bolt so I attack with the premise of, if my opponent doesn't block, I'm going to cycle both my Street Wraiths, putting me to six, then putting my opponent to three, so that when their Rift Bolt comes off Suspend on their turn, when their Rift Bolt comes off to Suspend, they go to one, I go to three, and then they attack me to two, they attack me to one, and they can no longer cast spells. We're both at one, so like, after I hit them to three, they no longer can cast any more spells besides the Rift Bolt that's on Suspend. And if they cast a spell in their end step, I just bolt them and win the game. So if my opponent blocked, I just wasn't going to cycle my Street Rates at all, and I was just going to play slow. It ends up, my opponent didn't block, I went Cycle Cycle, put him to three, he tried to Lightning Helix me at the end of their turn, and I bolted him one. The next game... I remember I my opening seven was Watery Grave Island, Watery Grave Island, Triple Stub, Serum Vision's Fatal Push on the draw against Burn. 
and I wanted a mulligan. I didn't really like my hand because I didn't have a threat, and I'm like, this is a hand like these stubborn denials are not very good if I don't find a threat. I easily could get um, taken out of this game. Tom played burn for a while. It still plays burn. So I look over to him, like, would you, as a burn player, do you not want to see this hand? And he said, you should keep that. So I kept my hand, kind of played a long game, ended up finding a Gurmag Angler, and then just stubbed every like every spell that he had. <clears throat> so at this point, we're 11-3, and three, and we tie into the top eight, which is just, like, awesome. My first top eight, like, you know, I was so excited. <clears throat> we're on the play, and our matchups are red-black versus mono-green. I'm playing Tron, and Delray's playing Lands. So, like, Delray's got the nuts matchup. Tom's deck is very good against Mono Green because he just has so much removal. I think the only... I think my matchup is about 50-50. The only reason I think that is because I'm on the play. <clears throat> if I was on the draw, I don't think I could beat Tron very often. Um, so I end up... I end up mulliganing to five in game one. And my opponent steamrolls me. Delray steamrolls his opponent. And Tom beats his opponent. So, like, we're down. I'm down a game. Both my teammates are up a game. Um, I keep a very strong hand in game two while my opponent mulligans. And then I thought sees them and just kind of run him over. <clears throat> Delray gets turn one chalice out of the lands deck. They crop rotation for the ancient tomb and get him. Um, and then Tom loses a very close game on the other side. So <clears throat> it's 1-1-1-1-1-1 across the board. I then play against, I keep a hand, I'm all going to six, keep a hand that's, my hand was Serum Visions, Bobble, Colagon's Command, Triple Fetch Land. And I just thought to myself, like, I have Serum Visions and Bobble, like, I'm going to be able to see a lot of cards. I Colagon's Command's the main way that I beat up, um, that I beat up O-Stone in the matchup. So that kind of, I've, like, got one problem fixed. But I end up just not, it doesn't come together. My opponent runs me over. <clears throat> so I go to look over at Tom's match. Um, Tom and his opponent are drawing sevens. Tom is a very good seven. I believe he's got, He's on the play. He's got double chain whirler, a braid, disintegration, and like three lands, I think. Something like that. He can cast everything. But Tom, I look back over, Delray's counting. And then all of a sudden, Delray's opponent surgicals. After Delray cracks his LED with Infernal Tutor on the stack. He surgicals because Delray ended up drawing the tendrils. His his opponent surgical the tendrils and Delray no longer had any way to win the game. And that was that was quite quite the deal breaker. The fact that Delray drew his one tendrils and his opponent drew his one surgical. It ended up costing us. Delray would have won. Had he not drawn the tendrils and ditched it with his LED, and or had his opponent not drawn the surgical, like both of those had to happen in order for him to win. And that was the end of our tournament. So it was kind of just a duff. Yeah, like he li like like it was that was like such a bad beat cuz if his opponent draws the surgical and delray doesn't draw the tendrils then he just like if the tendrils isn't in the yard then he just surgicals cuz delray delray had enough mana to go get like tutor 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 or whatever and then just kill him like he had a very strong draw he just happened to have drawn his tendrils, and then he got it. <clears throat> yeah. Surgical was just gross. Um, 
and that team ended up winning. Um, I really played – overall, the whole tournament was great. I really played against great people. Um, oh, nice. So I stole a match tight. Take game three when I clicked my opponent's hand. See, two snap casters, a surgical one, easy yard to win. <laughs> With a name like that. Um, the tournament was great. Uh, I really had a good time. Met a lot of people that said they were fans of the stream. Uh, which was great. Uh, it, it was it was it was tough to lose like that. I'm not gonna lie, like, because like I think that we were ahead in that match on paper between because like Storm versus Legacy is a slam dunk. Um, us, uh, Red Black against Mono Green is is good. I think I don't think it's like a you know a real good matchup, but it's close. Hey. Thank you very much, Dean. I appreciate it. Thank you, Archmage. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, and my LDS four percent. Yep. Um, I can beat the Jess Guy decks. Can't beat the Blue White decks. Like Blue White's terrible. So I guess moving forward with this deck here. <laughs> nice. Uh, moving forward with this deck, I really liked my list. This card was like straight average. There were a lot of times where it just like one. Yeah, there you go, Dean, with with the D with the Philly. Um, this card was like straight average. It was not bad. It was not exceptionally. It was not very good. Um, it could be anything. Um, it might become a fourth Snapcaster Mage, if I want a grindy card, instead of this Kira. Um, I might, if I was going to make a change to my main deck, I might actually cut a Snapcaster Mage, like remove this, and then add one more Thought Scour to my main deck. Snapcaster Mage was like, routinely, the probably the worst card in my deck throughout the weekend. I think that Part of that is just how this deck is set up. Part of it is how I play. I tend to play aggressively. I ditch my lands aggressively to Faithless Looting. I scry lands away. It's sometimes difficult for me to get to three mana to use it. Um, and I just don't think Modern is necessarily in a place where Snapcaster Mage is great. Thought Scour. Bob seems like the best of both worlds between the two lists. No desire. No. I, I want to play four anglers. Um, so two thought scour is because I have two faithless lootings also. You can't play a lot of faithless lootings because it deals you... You go down a card, which sucks. Um, you go down a card, and you can't go down a card too many times. Um... I like what Faithless Looting does. I think it's good for the deck. It allowed me to find my threat against Daryl Errors. Like, I saw... Tom said he was pretty entertained watching my match, Game 3 against him. I probably saw half of my deck because I sequenced right. I found my cantrips. Um, it was just important. Dude, it's just like... And Faithless Looting helps figure that out. Um, but I could easily see playing another Thought Scour here... Um, maybe some, I would like to check, I would like to look at a build here that doesn't play steam vents moving forward, plays another, plays another scalding tarn and then plays something like a tomb stalker. We are, we are all about the turn two anglers. So between, you know, thought scour and faithless looting, we get there pretty often with the bobbles. So, yeah, Basic Swamp's not great. None of the basics are great, but there's so many Field of Ruins that it just sucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but that was the tournament. So we're going to move here, and we're going to play some Magic.